networks, but but now we already know that it's coming. Right? We've been burned before, so let's learn from it. Let's embrace these cooperative technologies and go towards that next level. So how do we embrace it? I want to hit a little bit of, of thoughts on, on embracing that. Well, we need to adapt the way we think about going after these venues. We need to realize that it's not uh, IT operations, it's not network operations. We need to combine them. In my group, what we did is we, we I don't even like DevOps, uh, that term either. I like calling service management. So what I like thinking about is what are the services that I'm providing in a venue as a managed service provider? And then how do I end up utilizing information technologies, the, the multi-service networks that I have, as well as understanding the security implications of that and the consistency required to be able to deliver and adapt to what the venues are going through whatever that venue might be, whether it's an airport or a stadium or, or a hospital or whatever that might be. And one of the key aspects we're bringing in to make that happen is network function virtualization. And I won't use some of those terms, but network function virtualization allows us to decouple some of the technology. One of the first things you need to do is you need to look at the complexity of that network and you need to apply a software process to it. So you've got to sit there and break up the complexity modularize, and once you modularize and you shrink down it into its simplest form, then you can repeat it. Then you can automate it. And that's one of the key things, uh, I think, of, of being able to truly create good uh, virtualization is you've got to make that first step. If you just take your existing systems and just throw them right over the fence into, into, uh, and virtualize them, you're not taking advantage of what virtualization gives you. Virtualization is, gives you the ability to auto-scale. One of my professors a long time ago talked about how uh, distributed computing, it was brought up, um, is, is the future because it allows you to have autonomous uh, entities controlling uh, each individual facet appropriately. So he used to talk about how distributed computing, and I mean, this was back in 1995 or six or somewhere around there, maybe 93. He was, he, he was talking about distributed computing and how if we get distributed computing to be sentient, so all this software-defined networks or software-organizing networks, what we're really trying to do is create sentient objects, that uh, distributed sentient objects that can make decisions in a modular way and be able to feed back to a, a centralized core to be able to manage it. That's what network function virtualization, in my mind, gives us, and that's what, why we're way very far behind it and we're moving down that direction at Boingo. We've now launched a virtualization engine at five airports and we're continuing to push that out to other locations. Again, built on this uh, idea of distributing uh, the, the load and being able to go from a, a in-venue data center to a, a first private cloud to a public cloud and being able to see it all as one continuum instead of as separate entities that you have to deal with. And I, I'm getting a little nerdy because I noticed that we have a lot of nerds in here, so, so hopefully that's okay. All right, so innovative designs. We talked about a year and a half ago about uh, smart. We, not, we talked about how Boingo is pushing this new thing called smart. What we, what we also look at is we try to build uh, our, our systems, our networks in this smart design. What we want is we want to make sure security is uh, at the beginning. So smart, the S in secure, uh, smart stands for security. We, we need to recognize that there are different platforms out there. The different platforms require different bit rates, require different technologies, and so we need to adjust. An m to m device doesn't require the same thing as a smartphone, doesn't require the same thing as a tablet, doesn't require the same thing as a laptop. So you have to sit there and realize that you're dealing in a multi-platform environment, and so you need to adjust appropriately for that. Everything's got to be analytics driven. I completely agree with that. If you need to know what's going on in not only your network, but with your consumer, what's going on uh, even in the market. So trying to link all that data together is important. If you have an iOS 9 update happening at your airport and you don't know because you don't have intelligence in your network, guess what? You're going to end up having problems delivering your other services because everybody's going to go show up at your airport and start using Wi-Fi and downloading a gig update to iOS 9. You don't want that to happen. So what do you have to do? You have to use that analytics. You've got to build responsive systems so you can do the appropriate things to throttle, to push more bandwidth, or to do 
different things to take advantage of the technology you have so you can deliver that and still deliver your other services. And the last thing is, is we have to recognize that it has to be tiered. Certain people will only pay for a certain amount of stuff. They've got to pay sooner or later, right? So if you want that VR headset up at the top rafters, you probably need to figure out a way to be able to charge for that because it's going to require that extra capacity. So you've got to create tiered models to be able to effectively do that. And once you do all that, then the benefit is I've got to converge networks. I've got greater synergy. I've got a greater customer experience. I've got a common infrastructure, common backhaul I'm taking care of. And, in, and I'm hopefully, if I'm doing all of this right, I'm finding new markets to be able to make that money that I so need to make because these systems are not cheap. And that's one of the key things that you need to do. I wanted to hit real sh quickly, and I don't know how I'm doing on time, so we'll see, assume I'm good. I want to hit it real quickly on uh, LAA, LWA, and LTU. We did come out, and if you look recently uh, we, on a letter to the FCC, one of the things that we t I talked about earlier is the core thing that we need to focus on when we're building these connected experiences is that it's about the experience. It's about the experience of everything. That's why we're building this. It's not, we're not trying to build a second life or, or a different experience. What we're trying to do is build this experience that's everything and it's providing this thing. So to be able to do that, we need to recognize that all of the technologies have to interplay and work together. We've got to connect those dots. And so this common management principle where standards are crucial and we all adhere, adhere to them and work together to make them better is what we need to do. We need to recognize, for example, that LTU didn't go through the standards. It needs to go through the standards. LAA is going through the standards. I'm hoping we're all smart people. We can all work together just like we work together to solve the pass point problem. With Wi-Fi, we're going to be able to solve the, connect, the interoperability problem of LTE and Wi-Fi. And we're going to be hopefully solve the uh, interoperability, interoperability problem of satellite. Because there's a lot of satellite bands out there where none of us are taking advantage of as well. And LoRa and whatever else comes up next. So standards are crucial to being able to be able to move across these different uh, platforms. And we need to make sure that we're engaged and involved in these different standards uh, that are being pushed out by 3GPP or the WBA or the Wi-Fi Alliance or whoever it might be. All of them, PCIA, CTIA, all of those. We need to be involved and engaged in those to make sure that we're pushing those forward. Um, the Innovation Council here at the PCIA, I think, is a great uh, opportunity to get involved in that as well. And finally, with that, I'm going to have a little bit of fun and talk about what are we rocking next. All right, so I've kind of shared some of it, but I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about the Internet of Things. And you've heard some other people talk about it. I, I'm a wonk. I'm a nerd, whatever you want to say. I like technology. So I've got pretty much a lot of these different things in my house. I have, a, you know, Alexa or, or Amazon Echo in my house connected to all my devices that I set up in my house connected to my Wi-Fi so I can walk in the house and it drives my wife crazy, but it's really fun. I can sit there and turn on and off lights. I can turn them different colors. I can lower the turn on music. I can do all kinds of uh, interesting things. Uh, one of those fun stories is one of the things that upsets me is you can't rename uh, Amazon Echo. How many, does anybody here have Amazon Echo? Oh, all right. We got a couple in the back. All right, great. So it's fun. All right. You get to sit there and talk to this device and tell it to, you know, hey, Amazon, tell me a joke and it'll tell you a joke. I mean, it's kind of whatever. It's in its first phase. It's probably that convergence 1.0, but it's fun. And one of the things that uh, Amazon does right now is they only let you call it Amazon or Alexa. And I have a three-year-old and a six-year-old, and they don't know how to say Alexa, so it's always Alexa, Alexa. And he couldn't get it to do anything. So, so it's struggling, right? This is, these are the problems with, the, with connecting the dots. You start off in 1.0, and I've got a six-year-old who sits there and just keeps saying Alexa all day long, and gives me a headache, and it doesn't work. Right? And that's what we've got to solve, is we've got to realize that the Internet of Things is going to present these problems to us, but we're going to end up being able to solve them together if we, if we take on those challenges and work to solve those. And as uh, Steve said, I did put a chip in my hand. All right? I've got, here's me putting a chip in my hand. 
this chip in my hand, this little Bluetooth device lets me open my car door, lets me start my car. I don't have to carry around a key anymore. I, I can open up my house door. I can open up the office door. I'm the CTO, so I had them put in the appropriate Bluetooth in there. But, but I don't have to carry a key anymore. And when I go to conferences, our badges aren't like that here, but I can go into conferences. I can use my uh, Android phone. I got everyone, but I'll just sit there and say Android because uh, Apple you know, blocks uh, Bluetooth. But I can use my phone, I can scan my badge, I can then copy that tag, put it in my hand, and then I don't have to carry around a badge anymore, and I go into every conference using my hand. It's a good pickup line. It's about, that's about a good, I, you know, there's a, uh, it's a good pickup line, but it's, it's fun. All right, so, so the key thing is, is, you know, that's just the beginning, right? That's just the beginning of where we're going. But what we really need to do, and this is where I'm really passionate about, is this right here. We need to realize that why we're building these networks is to bridge the digital and the physical world. And the way we do that is we recognize that these networks are built in locations. We end up getting hyper vigilant on that location and the information available in that location so that we can drive better customer service, so we can drive better consumer insights, so we can increase brand equity. And then of course, at the end, we're gonna increase sales. So with that, I'm wrapping up and I think I have a few minutes for questions. So. Um, Let's take some action. Uh, we need to accelerate our innovation. The, the consumption's accelerating. It's time for us to accelerate our innovation. We need to close in on convergence. Convergence is happening. We've got Convergence 1.0 out now. It's already happening. If you're not playing, you need to be playing. It's time. We need to embrace those cooperative technologies. We've got to figure out how to connect those dots, and we've really got to embrace that. And finally, huge opportunities await. You know, I, hopefully you got an idea of some of the, the great things that we could make uh, happen with these networks. And with that, I'll take a few questions, and I'd like to say thank you for, so I'll take a few questions. Any questions? You guys are making it easy on me. All right, good.